Hi, assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. So today we're going to do some tutorial discussion for chapter 6 and we're going to focus on the subtopic of 6.1 dynamic equilibrium and the subtopic of 6.2 equilibrium constant in which we're going to focus on the KP as well as the KC. In this video, we're going to look into the tutorial question 2, 3, 4, 6, and 7 respectively. So without any further ado, let us start. So for tutorial question 2, for the reversible reaction below, which is the reactant A converted to product B, we need to sketch a variation of the concentration of A and B with time until the system has achieved equilibrium. And we need to explain the shape of the graph. So, in order to describe the variation in terms of graph, your graph needs to be looking something like this. Okay, so initially, um, we can say that the concentration of A will be a lot. And then, uh, as time goes by, we can see that the concentration of A will be getting reduced, 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 and reduced until it reaches to a certain point here. Okay, so you know that the concentration of A is reduced because some of A is now converted into B. Okay, and as time goes by, the concentration of B will be increases, increases, and increases up until to this time here, in which it's going to become constant after time T1. So you can say that the concentration of A will be decreases with time, and then the concentration of B will be increases over time. And at first, when the reaction proceeds, the rate of the forward reaction will get smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, so mula-mula dia akan besar, makin lama, makin kecil, and makin kecil. Meanwhile, for the B, at first it's going to be smaller, and then it's going to get bigger and bigger. So at certain point, the rate of the forward reaction and the rate of the reverse reaction is going to be the same. And it is equated by using the reversible arrow to be something like this, in which the rate of the forward reaction is the same as the rate of the reverse reaction. And this happens when it reaches time P1 in which the equilibrium is being achieved. And after time T1, the reaction does not stop. Dia tidak berhenti. Instead, what happened was, at time T1, the concentration remains constant. And the same goes to the concentration of B. It remains constant after time T1. And this uh, situation will still remain constant as long as there are no external factors that are acting on the system, in which the condition must happen in the closed system. Yeah, the faktor luaran yang lain. Alright, so these are the drawing and the explanation in order to answer question 2. Now for tutorial question 3, we need to determine whether the following reactions are homogeneous or heterogeneous. And then we need to write the equilibrium law for the above fraction in terms of the concentration Kc as well as the partial pressure Kp. So we are given the equation to be something like this. So in order to determine whether homo or heterogeneous, homo means that it, it's coming from the same species in the reaction. So the states of matter here referring to gas, gas, and gas. And because the reaction happens in the same species, which is the same states of matter, then we know that it is a homogeneous reaction. And now we can write the Kc. So Kc is equal to the concentration of the product divided uh, to the power of its stoichiometric coefficient, which is 2 here. And it's going to be divided by the reactant, which is the concentration of the PCl3 to the power of 2, which is the coefficient, and as well as the concentration of the oxygen to the power of 1. Okay, But the 1 here is usually uh, did not be written. Okay, so we have done about Kc, where C here refer to the concentration. Now we're going to put it in terms of Kp. So Kp here refers to the pressure. So similarly, we need to write the partial pressure, which is 
partial pressure of the POCl3 and then to the power of its stoichiometry, which is 2, divided by the concentration, the partial pressure of the reactant, which is the PCl3, the partial pressure of PCl3 to the power of 2, and then the partial pressure of oxygen to the power of 1. But 1 is usually omitted. So what we're going to get here is to be something like this. Okay, and this refers to Kp, which is referring to partial pressure. Now we're going to look into the this equation here. So we have three ferrum solids reacting with water in order to produce Fe3O4 with hydrogen gas. So you can see that this reaction involves various states of matter. They are solid, liquid, solid, and gases. Okay, and since it involves various states of matter, then it is a heterogeneous species. Species, maksudnya species yang berbeza. And by understanding this, we need to write the Kc. So the Kc uh, will only be included for the gas and aqueous states. Okay, untuk Kc, we only need to include for the gaseous states as well as for the aqueous states only. Pure solid and liquid is not included in the Kp as well as in Kc expression. Okay, so for the Kc, we only need to include the hydrogen gas. Okay, while the other is going to be ignored. So our Kc here is going to be the concentration of the hydrogen gas to the power of 4 because it's referring to the stoichiometric here. And then for the Kp, similarly, we only need to include for the gaseous only. Okay, because P here refers to pressure, so it only includes the gaseous phase. So, okay, P is equal to pH2 to the power of 4. Alright, so that's all for tutorial question 3. For tutorial question 4, at equilibrium, there are 250 mole of SO2, 1.35 times 10 to the power of negative 5 mole of oxygen, and 8.70 mole of SO3 present in a 12 liter flask. So you can imagine that there are going to be three types of gases inside a flask, in which the flask here will have a volume of 12 liter. So they are going to be an SO2 molecule, an oxygen molecule, as well as the SO3 molecule. And they are existing in equilibrium. So we need to find the Kc. So you know that the Kc is going to be equal to SO3, concentration of the product to the power of the stoichiometry to the power of 2, divided by the concentration of the reactant, which is SO2 to the power of 2, and then O2 here. So here is the Kc for the reaction. But now we only have the number of moles. Okay, so we can find the concentration by dividing the number of mole with the volume. Okay, so the volume here is given as 12 liter. So we can find the concentration of the SO2 gases in which the number of mole of the SO2 is going to be 2.5 divided by 12 and then we're going to get 0.2083 molar and then the concentration of oxygen is going to be 1.35 times 10 to the power of negative 5 mole divided by the volume which is 12 liter so we're going to get the concentration here to be 1.125 times 10 to the power of negative 6 molar. And then the concentration of SO3 is going to be 8.7 mole divided by 12. And once we do the maths here, we're going to get 0.725 molar. So by having this concentration for each species, we can place it inside the equation of the Kc. So as mentioned, our Kc here is going to be looking something like this. Alright, so we're going to substitute what we have here, which is SO3 0 0.725 into the equation. And then our SO2 here, which is 0 0.2083, Don't, do, not, do not forget the power 2 here. And then the concentration of oxygen to be 1.125 times 10 to the power of negative 6. So once we do the maths, we're going to get the Kc to be 1.077 times 10 to the power of 7. And in this chapter, we're just going to ignore the unit of Kc. 
So we're going to treat the KC to be dimensionless or no unit. Okay. Now for tutorial question 6, the following reaction achieve equilibrium when the partial pressure of bromine gas is 0 0.6 atm. So we have our ferrum Br3 solid converted to FeBr2 solid as well as half bromine gas. So we need to determine the Kp. So our Kp here is equal to the uh, Br2 P, partial pressure of Br2 to the power of stoichiometry which is half. And we only need to include the gaseous phase. The solid and the solid here, we're just going to ignore that. Okay. And now, the partial pressure at equilibrium for the bromine is 0 0.6. So, we're going to include 0 0.6 into this equation. And then, to the power of half, we're going to get the value to be 0 0.775. And we can ignore the unit because Kp and Kc is treated to be dimensionless in this chapter, right? And then we need to derive the Kp is equal to Kcrt half. So from this equation here, we need to try to prove that this equation is valid. So in order to do that, we can write the Kp and Kc first. So your Kp is obtained as the above, which is Kp is equal to PBr2 to the power of half. And then for Kc, we need to write it in terms of the concentration, which is in the closed bracket here. And it is also equal to the power of half. Solid and solid going to be ignored. So let's say if we assume the bromine gas behaves idly, so we can say that PV is equal to nRT. And since we are talking about the pressure of the bromine, and we are also referring to the number of mole of bromine. And in this reaction, only gases of bromine is uh, present. So it's also referring to the volume of the bromine. And then uh, the volume part here, you can bring it to the right hand side. So N going to be divided by V. So N over V here is referring to the concentration. Number of mole bahagi dengan volume. So this refer referring to the concentration of the bromine. And then, uh, by converting this into the concentration, we're going to get our third equation. So as what you can see here, the PBR2 and this PBR2 below down here can be substituted into the equation. So we can say that we can substitute equation number 3 into equation number 1. So KP, PBR2 sama dengan BR2RT. The mass of the equation is what? And then is equal to 1 over 2 to the power of 1 over 2 here. So once we expand uh, this bracket here, we're going to get Kp to be Br2 to the power of 1 over 2 and then Rt to the power of 1 over 2. And then we need to prove that here is equal to here. How can we do that? So the keyword here is to look at this part here. Because we know that Br2 to the power of 1 over 2 is referring to Kc. Okay, so Br2 to the power 1 over 2 is referring to Kc. So we can convert Br2 here equal to Kc. So we can say that Kp is equal to Kc, Rt to the power of 1 over 2. And this is how you derive the equation step by step. So for the geocation 7, at 25 degrees Celsius, the water liquid reached equilibrium according to the equation given here. So the water liquid will be in equilibrium with its water vapor. So the chemical composition is still the same, water is still water, but then the states of matter, liquid will be changes into gases. So this is a physical equilibrium. And for this reason, we need to calculate the Kp and Kc for the reaction. And we are given that the vapor pressure of water at 25 degrees Celsius to be 23.8 Sol. So from here, we can calculate the Kp because we have given the information here. So we know that the Kp is equal to the partial pressure of water in which it refers to the water vapor in gaseous state. 
And this pressure here is referring to 23.8 torque. And this torque here can be converted into ATM. As what you know that 760 torque is equal to 1 ATM. Let's say if you have 23.8 torque, then it is equal to X ATM. So you can do the multi the cross multiplication by yourself, and then the X value here you're gonna get to be 0 0.0313 ATM. And from this uh, information, we can calculate the KC because you know that KP is given as above. And then Kp is equal to Kc RT delta n. So our Kp here is 0 0.0313. And then Kc is something that we need to figure out. And then our R, R here is referring to the gas constant, which is 0 0.08 to 0 0.06. And then the temperature here need to be in Kelvin. So 25 degrees Celsius. So it's going to be 298.15. And then our delta N here, delta N here refers to the stoichiometry at the product side, which is 1. And then 4 here is treated as 0 because gaseous, right? So this one liquid is usually be ignored. So 1 minus nothing. Okay, so 1 minus 0 here. So once we do the maths, we calculate this side first. And then 0 0.0313 divided by this term here, we're going to get our Kc to be 1.28 times 10 to the power of negative 3. And this is obtained without any units. Okay. So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye.